South Africa, 27 points to 13 winners over England, folks. Pretty dominant in the end of it, wasn't it? Red card meant that the English kind of threatened to do what they did to the All Blacks last week and run down a lead, but unlike the New Zealand defence, the South African defence was not going to let that happen. We'll go through some events and stats. You guys can let us know your thoughts on the game. And, um, yeah, this is the last test of the year so kind of a bittersweet one but it was a good game i mean it started kind of slow the first half and especially the first half of the first half was kind of uh i don't know just kind of simmering the game never really took off until we saw maybe that first try from kurt liar so to be honest i mean some uncharacteristic stuff freddie stewart knocking the ball on at the back of the english backfield is unusual the guys usually save his houses um, South Africa winning a scrum penalty is not unusual, but then Faf de Klerk's first shot at goal, goodness me, wide, very wide, uh, South Africa offside of a line out, England chance for a penalty, Farrell, uh, like put your mortgage on that kick, no, wide, very unusual stuff, bad miss, I mean Faf's one was at least at a bit of an angle. But it was a really, really, really wide kick. Um, England did win a penalty at a scrum on 11 minutes to at last get the scoring underway. So three points to nil. Um, but then England kind of uncharacteristically, maybe it was similar to the end of last week's game, but in the first 15 minutes to be trying to run it out your own 22 was was brave. They must have seen something on, but they ended up uh, with a forward pass. So decent chance for South Africa. And it pretty much directly leads to a South African attack which leads to a high tackle, which leads to a penalty. So Faf's able to slot that one. So three points apiece. So it kind of tracks back to England, just being maybe a little bit too ambitious early on in the game. Uh, Van Portfleet, after being under a bit of pressure last week, put a nice little dinking kick through on like 21 minutes. Um, Vili LaRue at the back could only really grubber it out of his own 22. So again, a lot of pressure on the South Africans and they uh, end up conceding a penalty. But wouldn't you know it, Farrell missed another one. Really, really uncharacteristic stuff. Um, followed by Freddie Stewart kicking it out on the full not long later. And then, um, you know, conceding a penalty. So South Africa able to opt for a bit of touch. So, yeah, from, from missing a penalty to, to being under the pump down the other end. And England ended up getting a, a yellow card warning for infringements at the mall. Because uh, they keep coming in at the side. South Africa keep the pressure up. They want to go again, go again. They want to kind of go for the jugular. Khaleesi ends up getting held up. But it's it's kind of good, ambitious play from South Africa. Uh, eventually, they kind of switch tack on around about half an hour. When they're in English territory, uh, they opt for a droppy. Damien Willems, wow, what a, what a drop goal. We don't see enough drop goals these days, to be honest, but that one was a beauty. He hit that thing sweet. Like, I would not want to put any money on that guy to hit him from the tee. Like, he can hit some nice kicks, but he can also shank them pretty far wide. But that drop goal, proper thing of beauty, Damien Willemsa. Like, if he goes to the World Cup, which I think he will, um, like, that's really great experience to have in the, in the bag, right? So, uh, South Africa's in front, 6-3. And then... The game really comes alight from, from pretty much from that drop goal, I guess. Kurtley Aronson scores an absolute peach of a try. Marcus Smith, sadly for him, is going to have nightmares about this one. It's from kick return. Uh, Willems gets the ball to LaRue. LaRue slides it wide to Aronson, who's still got a lot of work to do. But he just be, he makes Marcus Smith stand still. Marcus Smith looks like he's standing in mud. And Aronson just burns right past them. It's unbelievable stuff. So... Great try. Missed conversion, so 11 points to 3. I did think maybe on the kick, Aaron's has slightly blocked uh, Stewart from um, from tackling Willems, who was the initial catcher of the ball. I thought he changed his line ever so slightly, but I don't know, one of those kind of 50-50 calls um, that I wouldn't you know necessarily complain too much about. Sometimes you see it get picked up, and sometimes you see it not. I did hear, I think, the ref talking to the TMO uh, when they, they ran the footage back. But um, they seem to be happy enough with it. So as long as they've had a look at it, uh, you play on, man. So 11 points to three. Um, 38 minutes as well. So they're going to go close from a mall. The mall leads to another yellow card warning. But the ref, I did think, was very clear in his instructions, Angus Gardner. Previously, the yellow card warning was for mall offences only. But then um, the, mall, the, the offence from England this time was like a line-out offence, jumping too early. So Angus Gardner says very clearly right now your warning is just across the board. So at least he was clear. 
Uh, I had the South African comms, so they, I think they wanted a yellow card there and there, but the, the warning they were on was for malls only, and then it becomes a kind of generic one. And interestingly, I guess it's a minute to go, South Africa opt for the three to make it a 14-3 lead, but I mean, part of me thinks like they are literally on a warning for any penalty in their own 22, they're going to get a man of the bin. Why not? Why not go for the jugular? But, I mean, earlier on, South Africa have gone for the jugular and been held up at the mall. So, I kind of get it. You know, it's a test match. You take your points. But, if they'd wanted to go full ruthless, they could, they could have gone for more points there and like a try. And at least, um, you know, you got a really good chance you're going to get a try. Really good chance you're going to get England yellow carded. So, not to be that. They still get three points out of it. So, looking in control, man. South Africa's had 64% possession. They've had 57% territory. They've had two clean breaks to nil. They've had 203 run meters to 65. Uh, it's all South Africa. There's not been that many tackles. 58 to 38. So, that's kind of low ball and play time, I guess. Like I said, the game kind of started a wee bit slowly. But it did pick up towards the end. Uh, start of the second half. Damien Phillips just goes and kicks another drop goal. Not as nice as his first one, but still pretty sweet. And that causes some handbags like no other. I'm not sure what was the cause of that. Uh, pretty sure Big Evan was there. Pretty sure Alice Genge was in there. Those guys like a wee bit of handbag. Um, and the ref says, again, with the clear communication, no, no, none of that stuff. If you're going to keep up with that, you're going to leave it with me, basically. And I dislike it when refs do that and don't follow through, but later on he does follow through. So again, credit to him. Um, Ori drops the restart, which is a chance for England, which is a kind of unfortunate one for South Africa because they've just put the pressure on with that drop goal to make it 17, um, what was it, 17 3 at that point. But they drop the restart, then they get a free kick at the scrum. So kind of get out of jail, but then drop the line out. So kind of a comedy of errors. South Africa kind of can't exit after getting points. Leads to England getting a penalty. So, kind of a soft three to concede from a South African point of view. But England needs to get back in touch. So, 17-6. And then, like I mentioned, 47 minutes, a reverse penalty. It's an England penalty. Uh, I think Johnny Hill kind of pushes or shoves Fuff the Clerk from memory. And the ref's like, nah. I said, once the whistle's gone, that's it. Reverse penalty. That's what you need to do. And I don't think we saw any more of that nonsense. Like, if you stomp it out pretty early and sternly, I, I'm pretty sure. I don't, I don't think we saw any more. Could be wrong. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, I do feel like if you're going to put that warning in, it needs to be enforced strictly the next time you do it. Otherwise, they're just going to take the take the mickey with you. So um, yeah, reverse penalty. Very soft, but they were warned. And then England infringe in their own 22. That warning from earlier in the game is still there. So Curry ends up getting yellow carded. South Africa go to the mall with the extra man. They go through some phases when the mall can't initially get over. And who finishes it? Big Evan. Big Evan doesn't get that many tries. But Eben Etzebeth managed to go over. So 24-6 is starting to look like a pretty huge lead. And then even bigger when uh, towards the end of the Curry yellow card, Fafta Clerk hits a really long penalty um, to make it 27-6. So literally England need to score three converted tries just to get a draw at that point. It's not looking that likely, is it? But what happens pretty much immediately after they get that lead? South Africa. Thomas Detoy who's not been on that long, puts his shoulder into the head of Luke Kowandiki. And it's a pretty bad one. Um, I think he may have been able to wrap if Maro is not there. But honestly, you need to go with more control than that. He absolutely clatters into Kowandiki, so it's a red card. I wouldn't have any complaints about that. Uh, it was pretty dumb, especially when your team's up by 21 points. You just need to kind of be controlled and, and uh, keep doing what you're doing because the Fords have been dominant. But nope. It's a, it's a red card for him. So you've got 20 minutes to play with an extra man. And we saw what England did to New Zealand last week with an extra man only for 10 minutes. So um, England opt for a line out, which is good. But South Africa steal it. So immediately kind of take that momentum back from England. Then there's a weird moment where like Marnie Libok clears the ball and it hits the bloody spider cam. Thank goodness there's no points directly conceded. Because they have to go back for a scrum where the kick was taken, which was in his own in-goal area. So South Africa, after having just cleared it, have to go back into their own five-meter line. The bloody spider cam was in the way. But no points are conceded from that resulting spider cam incident. I mean, South Africa um, conceded a penalty at the breakdown after that scrum. So they are under the pump, but they are then able to exit later because England can't convert. So that would have been horrendous. That would, have, that would have been Conspiracy Theory City 
if uh, you know if England score from there and then some mount some kind of comeback. But thankfully, nothing's doing. Spider cam operator needs to get out of there because Money Limbox got a bigger boot than you thought. So that was just weird. Um, Seventy-one minutes though. Uh, Slade does get the much-needed try from England. It starts with a Jack Knoll line break, to be honest, and he did pretty good from the bench. I think he beats Willems there in Creel. Uh, gets some good go for ball. Ben Young's with the quick tap to keep the uh, South African defense guessing because they've not been able to really break them down. And um, yeah, 27-13. Still looking like a long way back, but based on what you've seen last week from England, it's not beyond the realms of possibility, especially when Khaleesi goes off with an HIA and Fafta Klerk goes off hurt. So um, maybe it's going to be there for England, but I mean, nah. England just can't get enough go for. There's a not straight line out, which you can't be doing when you're chasing the game. You need to take every opportunity. And um, like just very different defending from South Africa's defense compared to the All Blacks the week before. South Africa were not passive like the All Blacks were. So England not able to kind of get that free-flowing game going. They were kind of making a few errors. So um, yeah, the game ends with a weird kick dead. I don't think South Africa's going to pass New Zealand on the world rankings because they didn't quite get the points margin. But if they'd scored either a penalty or a try at the death, I think they might have done it. But um, yeah, the game ends still with a pretty comfortable victory for the Springboks. So, I mean, run made has finished 277 to 316. That's not that different. Um, South Africa finished edging the position in the territory. Fully three clean breaks to one. You can thank Kurt Lee Aronser for the majority of those, at least two of them. Uh, defenders beaten is actually 22-13 to England, but also turnovers conceded 14-9 to nine by England. Coughed up too much ball. Their line-out was 6 from 9, whereas the Springboks at 10 from 10. Penalty count actually finishes pretty tight. 13 for England, 12 from the Springboks, so not that much in it. I honestly thought, even my dad said the ref controlled the game pretty well. I thought he controlled the game pretty well. Um, very clear communication with what I like, and then following through on the things that he says... At the start, I mean, there was a fair bit of scrum faffing about if you wanted to be really critical. But anyway, uh, Jack Noel comes off the bench, gets the only clean break from England, gets 64 metres and seven defenders beaten. Tom Curry, despite his yellow card, still England's top tackler with 13 from 15. Kurtley Lee has been a phenomenal form, hasn't he? 118 run metres, two clean breaks, three defenders beaten, plus a nice try. Uh, Eben Etzebeth, 10 from 10 tackles. I think Khaleesi was 10 from 11. There you go, folks. End of the test season for 2022. And it's a, it's a good win for the box. Disappointing for England. But we'll see what Eddie's got up his sleeve for the Six Nations. You guys let us know your thoughts on this one. Who would you be backing if these teams were to meet at a World Cup? Could be pretty interesting. But anyway, you guys let us know your thoughts. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys consider. See you later.